Today on Variant, we talk about Dr. Fate. Welcome to Variant, we love comics more than the amount of money the Hulk spends on new pants. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. Every now and then on the show, we like to talk about comic book characters you might have only heard of or just seen in cartoons, TV, video games, or something like that. But you might not know much about them beyond that. Well, Dr. Fate falls under that category. I'm sure most of you know about him on some level, as he's been in several DC cartoons, The Smallville Show, and referenced in the Constantine TV series. He's also going to be in the upcoming Injustice 2 game. But again, if you're not a diehard DC fan, you most likely don't know much about him beyond that. And that's where I come in, because today we're going to take a gander at his comic book history. Now before getting into Dr. Fate's history, I just want to let you all know that many different people have donned the mantle of Dr. Fate over the years. Such as Kent Nelson, Eric and Linda Strauss, Inza Kramer Nelson, Jared Stevens, Hector Hall, Kent V. Nelson, Khalid Ben Hassin, and Khalid Nassour. Now I may briefly talk about each of them later, but this episode will mainly be focusing on one of them, and that is Kent Nelson. He is the original Dr. Fate from the Golden Age of Comics, and is easily the most popular version of the character. Hence Kent Nelson Dr. Fate being the one used for Superman the Animated Series and the Justice League Unlimited cartoon. Kent Nelson was also the version used for Smallville, Batman the Brave and the Bold, and Young Justice. I also believe that Kent Nelson is the Dr. Fate that will be used in the Injustice 2 game. I don't think that's officially been confirmed, but I think it's pretty safe to assume. With that covered, let me give you a brief summary of the character's publication history. Kent Nelson first appeared in More Fun Comics issue 55 in 1940. That's right, he was created only two years after Superman and one year after Batman, meaning Dr. Fate is an OG DC character. He was created by Gardner Fox and Howard Sherman. Just several months after his creation, Dr. Fate became a founding member of the Justice Society of America in All-Star Comics issue 3 in the winter of 1940. This lasted four years until he made his last appearance in the book in All-Star Comics issue 21 in 1944. Around the same time, his solo strip came to an end as well in More Fun Comics issue 98 in 1944. But don't feel too bad for Dr. Fate because when one door closes, another one opens. He would go on to appear in several other comic book titles like The World's Finest, DC Presents, The Brave and the Bold, and the list goes on. He would go on to appear in different DC titles for years and even get his own miniseries now and then. But after 1985's Crisis on Infinite Earths, good old Dr. Fate joined the Justice League. In 1988, DC also launched an ongoing Dr. Fate series written by J.M. DeMattis and Sean McManus. Then in 1999, the reemergence of the JSA allowed Dr. Fate to be reworked once again. Then in 2005, the character was killed off as part of the Days of Vengeance limited series that led into the Infinite Crisis event. A few more things happened with Dr. Fate between 2005 and 2011, but in 2011, DC rebooted all of their books in continuity and made Dr. Fate part of the Earth 2 ongoing series. Finally, in 2015, we got a new Dr. Fate solo series that lasted 18 issues. And recently, Dr. Fate briefly made an appearance in the DC Rebirth one-shot special. But let's get into his origin. Kent Nelson was born in 1928. That's right, this dude is as old as dirt. His father, Sven Nelson, was an archaeologist, and his mom, Celestine Nelson, died shortly after his birth for an unknown cause. Flash forward to 1940, while on a dig with his father, Kent came across a temple and of course decided to explore it. While exploring the temple, Kent spotted a sarcophagus that contained the body of Naboo the Wise. Next to it, he saw a lever that would open said sarcophagus. And what do you do when you see a lever that opens a sarcophagus? You pull it, of course. Once the sarcophagus is open, white gas started pouring out like some kind of old sci-fi movie, and Naboo awoke from his slumber. Naboo then thanks Ken for releasing him from his suspended animation. But this is a comic origin, so tragedy must occur in one way or another. And here it is, we then find out that Ken's dad Sven died in the chambers of the temple because the chambers were built to release a poisonous gas on anyone who didn't know its secrets. Once out of the temple, they bury Sven and Naboo says, I will try to repay you for your loss by teaching you the scripts of the universe. So over the next several years, Naboo taught him many things, two of which being the secrets of levitation and how to move things with his mind. Naboo then tells Kent, these shall be your garments, Kent Nelson. From this day on, you shall be Dr. Fate. And boom, just like that with Naboo handing Kent the helmet of fate, the amulet of Anubis, and the cloak of destiny, he became Dr. Fate, the primary agent of the Lords of Order. Who are the Lords of Order, you ask? Well, the Lords of Order are a group of godlike supernatural beings who dedicated themselves and their near infinite power to being the force of order in the universe, while also maintaining a cosmic balance across the entire universe. But let me also elaborate a little bit more on Naboo. He's one of the Lords of Order who took human form and settled in ancient Egypt, where he was known as an incredibly powerful sorcerer slash magician. Naboo's soul actually resides within the Helm of Fate, giving the wearer great magical power over the forces of order 
disorder and chaos. And as many of you know from the Young Justice cartoons, Naboo is pretty unsympathetic to the mortals that become his host. But let's move on to the three objects that make up Dr. Fate. Most famously, you have the Helmet of Fate, also known as the Helmet of Naboo. Then you have the Cloak of Destiny and the Amulet of Anubis. Let's start with the Helmet. The Helmet of Fate is the link between those acting in the role and Naboo himself. As I just mentioned before, Kent Nelson had several abilities taught to him by Naboo, but only gained full power when wearing the Helmet of Fate. For this reason, a crap ton of people have sought the helmet for themselves. Then you have the Amulet of Anubis, which gives the wearer magical abilities. It also has a magical void that can hold people inside it. Basically, it's like a portable prison around your neck. And lastly, you have the Cloak of Destiny. In short, it grants the wearer flight, super strength, and invulnerability. It's essentially the coolest cape ever, although Spawn's cape is a close second. Now I said earlier that I might briefly go over the different people who have been Dr. Fate, well I've decided to do just that, and go. Besides the most popular Dr. Fate, Kent Nelson, you also have Eric and Linda Strauss. After Kent's death, because everyone eventually dies in comics, Naboo chose Eric Strauss and his wife Linda to become the next Dr. Fate. That's right, it's a two for one. Eric and Linda had to actually merge into one being in order to become Dr. Fate. That also explains why this Dr. Fate has boobs, but that's slightly besides the point. Speaking of boobs, Kent Nelson's wife Inza also donned the Dr. Fate mantle. Kent and Inza's soul had been residing in a fantasy world within Dr. Fate's amulet, but when they were resurrected in new younger bodies, Inza realizes only she can become Dr. Fate, but as Dr. Fate, she became reckless in the use of her power. You may be saying, wait, what? How can she become Dr. Fate? While at a certain point in Kent Nelson's career, he had to fuse with his wife in order to become Dr. Fate. But after they died and were brought back to life, only she could become Dr. Fate. Get it? Got it? Good. Moving along, we have Jared Stevens. He was originally hired to retrieve the artifacts of Dr. Fate. Long story short, when he came into possession of the Helmet of Naboo, Naboo was all like, yo, I want you to be the new Dr. Fate. Jared turned him down, but was eventually reluctantly drawn into the role, operating under the name Fate. If you're wondering why he doesn't have the helmet, amulet, or cape, well that's because he tore the cape up and wrapped it around his arm to heal it after it was hurt. The amulet blew up when he tried to use it against demons, which also gave him the tattoo on his eye, and the helmet he melted down to make a dagger and throwing stars. Needless to say, this is a very different version of Dr. Fate, which is probably why he's also just called Fate. Then we have the son of Hawkman and Hawkgirl, Hector Hall. He was originally the Silver Scarab before his first death. Yes, I meant to say first death. Again, comic books. He then briefly took over the role as Sandman and finally was a reincarnation of Dr. Fate until dying a second time. There's also the grand nephew of the first Dr. Fate, Kent V. Nelson. He succeeded Hector Hall as the new Dr. Fate after coming into possession of the helmet. Then we have the new 52 Dr. Fate from Earth 2, Khalid Ben Hassin. Not a whole lot is known about him except that he gained his powers at the same time Hawkgirl of Earth 2 gained her powers. Next we have Khalid Kent Nassour. He's a Brooklyn medical student and the last wearer of the Helm of Fate. He has an American mother and an Egyptian father and is a descendant of the pharaohs from long ago. He also just wears a blue hoodie unlike your traditional Dr. Fate. As for the future of the character, it looks like Kent Nelson will be back as Dr. Fate once again as he briefly appeared in the DC Rebirth one-shot special. At least I could only assume that's Kent Nelson Dr. Fate as Rebirth is all about going back to DC's roots. But now it's time for powers and abilities. Dr. Fate is just about as powerful as heroes come, and here's why. He possesses super strength, super speed, telepathy, flight, levitation of objects, invulnerability, mystical sense, vast knowledge of magic, and he never ages. Oh, and did I mention that's just Nelson's powers without the helmet, amulet, and cloak? With the helmet and everything on, he is capable of phasing, invisibility, time travel, magnetic control, illusion casting, mystical bolts, damage resistance, immortality, and so much more. Believe it or not, he's actually one of the most powerful heroes in all of comics. With that said, I think it's time for some reading recommendations. You have More Fun Comics issue 55 and 67, The Immortal Dr. Fate miniseries, The Last Days of Justice Society of America, and JSA Justice Be Done. Read those and no fate better, man. Us guys know how important a good razor is. Well, my friends, dollarshaveclub.com delivers high quality razors right to your front doorstep. And if you go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash variant or click the link in the description below, you'll get a one month trial of any razor for just a dollar. I know, that's crazy talk, right? A dollar. 
You also get to pick out what kind of blades you want. Personally, I like the Executive Razor, but you guys could pick whatever you want. And they just don't have blades. They also have Dr. Carver's Shave Butter, which is awesome, body cleanser, shampoo, and a bunch more stuff. You definitely have to check it out for yourself. Just go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash variant or click the link in the description and get a one month trial of any razor for just a dollar. There's no catch, hidden fees, or commitments, and you can cancel whenever the heck you want. So what are you guys waiting for? Go get a razor and shave your face, even if you have a beard like me, because even though I have a beard, I gotta shave this and this. So get a razor, my friends. First up for Wednesday, April 5th, we have Deathstroke issue 16. In what could be his final battle, Deathstroke, wounded and blind, confronts Deadline, the human weapon. Next we have Superman issue 20. This directly follows the Superman Reborn aftermath, meaning all Superman fans are gonna wanna read this issue. And finally we have Batman issue 20. This is the finale of the I Am Bane storyline. There is no going back this time. No more tricks, no more allies, just Batman and Bane. And that's going to do it for another episode of Variant, but if you like what you saw today, be sure to hit the subscribe button and then the bell next to it so you're notified whenever we upload new videos. But as always, you can like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow Variant on Twitter at Variant Comics or me on Twitter at Eris underscore Quinones. But I'll see you guys next week when I talk about what? All things comics. Flash forward to 1940 while all in an archaeology... <laughs> the Mattis McManus? Coincidence? I think, I think not. not. <laughs> Speaking Thank of boobs... You.